What do y'all think about a quick feel-good exercise? Yes, we've been summoned by math homework help, and it's imperative that we assist in a timely manner. This parent says, I'm lost, sun's triangle homework. This is an amusing title because it makes me think, does the sun have math homework and history homework and English homework? Or does the sun have a triangle homework and circle homework and septagon homework? Regardless, it's the triangle homework we're here to slay today. The problem says, if the given triangles are similar, what is the value of x? So we have triangle PTS and triangle PRQ, those must be similar, and you can see that PQ has a length of 6x minus 9, so what's x? One of the comments on the thread said, these replies, sobbing emoji, were so cooked. Why? All but one of the replies got it wrong. Lol. How the heck are people getting this problem wrong? Obviously, any average Joe Schmo who's only done circle and octagon homework for the last decade or two of their life might not get this correct, but people who are on math homework help and replying to posts, you would think, have a pretty good chance of getting this one right. Well, some of the replies were making a mistake that's easy to make on this sort of problem. Some of the others, I really had no idea at a glance what they were thinking. But hey, benefit of the doubt, maybe they just misread the question, tried to be helpful and type out a response real quick. Turned out it didn't make sense, but let's figure this out. Oftentimes, you can see students and even their parents bemoaning how the math teacher insists on spending time on these abstract explanations of why something works, instead of just focusing on the rote process and a boring sequence of steps. Well, this is a great example of where if you actually know what you're doing and what's actually going on, it's really easy to solve the problem. And if you don't, it's really easy to make mistakes. We'll quickly touch on the mistake you can see written here, but but for anyone who doesn't know this stuff, it will be easier to look at that mistake if we just solve the problem first. So the idea is we've got this larger triangle, triangle P T S. And from these little arrows in the diagram, we see that segment RQ is parallel to segment TS. When a segment cuts two sides of a triangle and is parallel to the third side, we get a smaller, similar triangle contained therein. The smaller triangle and the bigger triangle have to be similar because all of their angles are congruent. They share this angle, and then the other pairs of angles have to be congruent because they are corresponding angles of parallel lines cut by a transversal. Since the triangles are similar, their sides must be proportional. And you can see that's the property that the student was trying to apply here. The sides being proportional means this. If you look at this side of the smaller triangle and this corresponding side of the bigger triangle, that ratio is four to 12 or one third. So I could write the ratio of these two sides is four to 12 or one third. This means that any other pair of corresponding sides of these similar triangles must also have a ratio of one third. Thus, to solve for X, we simply need to find another ratio that involves X and set it equal to one third. In particular, we'll look at this side of the small triangle, PQ, and compare it to this side, PS, of the big triangle. The length PQ of that side of the small triangle is, of course, 6x minus 9. So, constructing this new ratio in the numerator, we have 6x minus 9. We're comparing that to the corresponding side of the larger triangle, PS, which has a length of 6x minus 9, this part, plus 3 that other part. So 6x minus 9 plus 3. 6x minus 9 plus 3 is the same as 6x minus 6 because negative 9 plus 3 is negative 6. What does this ratio equal? Well, since it's the ratio of corresponding sides of the similar triangles, we know that it must be one third, just like this other ratio of corresponding sides. Then we'll want to get rid of this denominator, so let's multiply both sides of the equation by 6x minus 6. On the left, doing that will cancel out the denominator and we'll just be left with the numerator 6x minus 9. And on the right, we'll have 6x minus 6 over 3. Now, for 6x minus 6 over 3, we get some cancellation, because 6x and 6 both have a factor of 3. 6x over 3 is in fact 2x, and 6 over 3 is 2, so that's minus 2. 
We'll then move the variables to the left, so subtract 2x from both sides, 6x minus 2x is 4x, and then add 9 to both sides to move the constants to the right. Adding 9 to both sides, we'd have minus 2 plus 9, or 7, on the right, and so we have that x is equal to 7 over 4. Or if you're a decimal person, that's 1.75. So very easy problem. The issue is when students just learn the mechanical feel of these problems, instead of actually understanding the geometry, it's really easy to make this mistake. In this attempted solution, on the left, they compare this segment to this segment, 6x minus 9 to 3. They're not comparing corresponding sides of the two triangles. This segment QS with a length of 3 is not a side of any triangle in this diagram. But if students are just drilling these problems with no understanding of what's going on, they could definitely develop a feel of like, okay, what do I do? I just bam, bam, put this over this and then set it equal to uh, that over that, right? Corresponding sides, just match them up. It's like just trying to piece together a recipe from the things on the paper that are in similar positions instead of actually applying the geometry. Obviously, we don't know for sure why the student made this mistake. I'm just saying if you focus purely on the mechanics, this is a mistake that's really easy to make. The mechanics kind of feel like just matching stuff up that's in similar positions, but the concept is setting equal ratios of corresponding sides of similar triangles. If you know you're working with sides of a triangle, you know that just three on its own does not belong anywhere in the solution. This problem was made even easier by the fact that it says, if the given triangles are similar, what is the value of x? You could have just crossed out that first part completely and just asked, what is the value of x? And one would assume from the diagram that these two sides are parallel, which immediately means that the two triangles are similar. Anyway, easy little geometry problem today. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions or if you have any interesting experiences learning or teaching this stuff in the classroom. There is tension in the air. Be sure to subscribe for more of the swankiest math videos on the internet. I'm not stable, I'm feeling hard to keep the cable cut and unsort the table. If Texas instruments don't reply, I think this time it might be fatal. I wish to sell my own fake, cause I'm jaded. Hate the odds that I calculated. Press and pull and pray and push it all the way through the whole blue planet. Faded. Psychosomatic habits, why you're so, so.